In this video, I'm going to be explaining all the little details about working on Suzuki Katana spark plugs that I can. My model bike is a 1990 GSX 750F, so your spark plugs might have slight variations in the specific types that you're using. However, all these general concepts are, should be the same for all Suzuki Katana models, so you're going to want to watch the video even though you don't have my exact model bike. When you're removing your Suzuki Katana spark plugs, these are the only parts that you're going to want to remove, seat, upper fairings, fuel tank, and then you can get to the spark plugs. However, I have my entire thing removed because currently I have some transmission problems and I'm going to be replacing it with this one over here. The first thing that I'll be covering is the kind of spark plugs that you want. The two recommended types are right over here, NGK being the brand. They're standard in the hot type. If you want, you can pause this video now and read this. It explains when you might want to use a hot one. However, you do not have to use the stock or recommended spark plugs. There are plenty others that are compatible, and in my case, I'm actually using a different one. The reason I'm using a different one is because when I ordered this set over here, while it's NGK and it's the recommended type, however, when it showed up, it didn't work, along with the three others that I ordered. This is a kind of an odd situation. Uh, they could be damaged in shipping because you essentially just don't want to drop these things. They're quite delicate. Or it could have just been that it was a fake. I've heard a lot of stories online of there being a lot of fake NGK spark plugs. I can't remember where I got mine, but you want to keep that in mind when ordering it. So get it from a good source. I strongly recommend that you use NGK spark plugs. For the meantime, though, I'm going to be using this because it works just fine for me. Whenever you're removing your spark plugs, you're going to want to keep in mind that they're 18 millimeter. If you're having a problem removing your spark plugs because they're seized up, it helps to get more leverage by using a larger tool like this instead of a small one like this. It can also help if you add something like WD-40 inside of here. You'll have to give it some time for the WD-40 to actually sink in and help loosen it up though. After you've managed to loosen up your spark plug, it helps to use a tool like this to lower it in and then just pull out the spark plug. This is a small magnet that I like to use whenever I remove spark plugs. A little detail that you're going to want to keep in mind on your bike is that little hole right over there. That allows water to leak out of your bike. However, it can get clogged and essentially water will start to build up around inside of here and you really don't want that to happen. This small hole right next to my thumb is where that water will leak out and you'll want to blow an air compressor through here or through the top itself just to get it out. However, keep your face out of the way or you're going to blow it all into your face. <laughs> you're also going to want to measure your spark plugs gap. As you can see, this shows how you want your gap to be. However, you might not be using the original spark plugs like I am, so you're going to have a slightly different gap like this. It acts the same way though. When measuring your spark plugs gap, you want to use a tool just like this. In my case, I have millimeters on one side and inches on the other side. What you want to do is find the correct size. For me, I use a 0.64 because it's in between 0.6 and 0.7 millimeters. And then you want to put this piece in between it and make sure that the gap itself is a reasonable degree. If it ends up being out of spec, you use this part over here to bend it to the correct spec. Another aspect regarding these spark plugs is the spark itself. Just because you're actually able to get a spark from it doesn't mean that it's a good enough of a spark. This spark plug over here is a great example of it. I'm actually able to get a very weak spark out of it, however, it is way too weak. A good way to test this is to test the resistance. There's two methods you want to use when testing it. First, one of the testers goes on this side and the other goes anywhere on the body. If you're able to get any reading from it whatsoever, that means the spark plug is bad. The other way to test it is to put the, the tester over here and in the center. You want it to be a good amount of resistance. Depending on the kind of spark plug you're using, it's going to read slightly differently, and I'm going to include a link in the description going over in great detail how to test spark plugs, and I highly recommend you watch this video, even though I didn't make it. 
in my case, the spark plugs that I had, especially the, the ones that are potentially fake, I was able to get a slight reading from the center electrode. However, it was way too weak. And when I used this one over here, it was just reading so much better. Here's a great graphic describing all the little details of spark plug conditions that you can get. Feel free to pause this and go over any of them that you would like. When reinstalling your spark plugs, you're gonna to wanna to be careful. First of all, you don't wanna drop your spark plugs in there. If you do that, you could mess up the gap and you're just gonna to have to remove the spark plug and then recheck the gap. Another aspect of spark plug reassembly is trying to prevent it from seizing the next time you try to remove it. There's the materials that you can buy from essentially any automotive store or even Walmart that you coat along the threads. This material helps prevent it from seizing while still allowing it to ground. I have to recommend that you clean your spark plugs before reassembling them. That includes the threads on here and the material at the end, as well as the threads inside of there. You'll want to make sure though that you don't drop anything inside of here because if anything gets inside of the cylinder, it could also get caught between the valve and the valve seats and that's a very bad thing.